night, everybody. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to my Food Monday. This is probably like a little special occasion for me. My son, who's five years old, just graduated kindergarten. So for me, this is another special edition in which I'm going to play speeches and relevant topics to only black men for the first half of the show. I want to thank, again, Plato Music with the introductory beat. And if you can check my YouTube account, you'll notice that Plato's music is all over it. You know, that's the intro for the two shows that I now host, which would be My Food Monday, which is Monday, 11 to 1, which you're listening to now. And the Beehive, which is Thursday from 10 to 11, where I get to interview nothing but the best and upcoming independent artists in the game right now. So, of course, I'll be playing some of their music as we go along the show and in between the snippets and excerpts that I have. I want to remind everybody again, you're listening to Indie Dynasty Radio, and we're broadcasting on Blog Talk Radio so you can check us out at www.indydynasty.radio.com. You can also check my blog out at www.vdubboogie.wordpress.com. You can see me on Twitter at vdubboogie. You can see the station on Twitter at ND Dynasty Radio. Now, remember, if you're independent, you're up-and-coming artist, and you need that exposure and you want to be heard, you can always email me or the station at NDDynastyRadio at gmail.com or at MyFoodMonday at gmail.com. So right now we're really utilizing the Google system. I suggest you do too. You, you'll notice that if you look on my uh, YouTube account and the videos that I've been posting with the interviews that I've been doing, you'll see a list of social networks that I'm on, and that list is only going to grow from here on out. So me and the station are going to try to elevate as much as we can and remind you to listen to all our shows that we have playing. But for right now, I want to congratulate my son for graduating kindergarten with the most stickers. I guess that's top honors for anybody else, you know. Just as much as awards as my daughter got on Thursday, which was four awards for top honors. And I feel like a very proud parent. So with that said, I'm going to play Barack Obama's commencement speech to the graduates of Morehouse, class of 2013. Get tuned in to Mind Food Monday. Hello, Morehouse. Well, thank you, everybody. Please be seated. I love you back. That is why I'm here. Uh, I have to say that uh, it is uh, one of the great honors of my life to be able to address this gathering here today. I want to thank Dr. Wilson for his outstanding leadership and the Board of Trustees. Uh, we have Congressman Cedric Richmond and Sanford Bishop, both proud alumni of this school as well as Congressman Hank Johnson and one of my dear friends and a great inspiration to us all, the great John Lewis is here. We have uh, your outstanding mayor, Mr. Kasim Reed, in the house. To all the members of the Morehouse family, and most of all, congratulations to this distinguished group of Morehouse men, the class of 2013. Uh, I have to say that uh, it's a little hard to follow, not Dr. Wilson, but a skinny guy with a funny name. Uh, the cigar, uh, Sadella, he's going to be doing something. I also have to say that you all are going to get wet. And I'd be out there with you if I could. But Secret Service gets nervous. So I'm going to have to stay here dry. But know that I'm there with you in spirit. 
Some of you are graduating summa cum laude. Some of you are graduating magna cum laude. I know some of you are just graduating thank you laude. And that's appropriate because it's a Sunday. I see some moms and grandmas here, aunts, in their Sunday best, although they are upset about their hair getting messed up. <laughs> Michelle would not be sitting in the rain. She has taught me about hair. I want to congratulate all of you. The parents, the grandparents, the brothers and sisters, the family and friends who supported these young men in so many ways. This is your day as well. Just think about it. Your sons, your brothers, your nephews, they've spent the last four years far from home and close to Spelman, and yet they are still here today. So you've done something right. Graduates, give a big round of applause to your family for everything that they've done for you. I know that some of you had to wait in long lines to get in today's ceremony. And I would apologize, but it did not have anything to do with security. Those graduates just wanted you to know what it's like to register for classes here. <laughs> And this time of year brings a different kind of stress. Every senior stopping by Gloucester Hall over the past week making sure your name was actually on the list of students who met all the graduation requirements. If it wasn't on the list, you had to figure out why. Was it that library book you lent to that trifling roommate who didn't return it? Was it Dr. Johnson's policy class? Did you get enough Crown Forum credits? Yeah. On that last point, I'm going to exercise my power as president to declare this speech sufficient. Yeah. Crown Forum credits for any otherwise eligible student to graduate. That is my graduation gift to you. You have a special dispensation. Now, graduates, I am humbled to stand here with all of you as an honorary Morehouse man. I finally made it. And as I do, I am mindful of an old saying. You can always tell a Morehouse man, but you can't tell him much. <laughs> and that makes my task a little more difficult, I suppose. But, but I think it also reflects the sense of pride that's always been part of this school's tradition. Benjamin Mays, who served as the president of Morehouse for almost 30 years, understood that tradition better than anybody. He said, and I quote, it will not be sufficient for Morehouse College, for any college for that matter, to produce clever graduates, but rather honest men, men who can be trusted in public and private life, men who are sensitive to the wrongs, the sufferings, and the injustices of society, and who are willing to accept responsibility for correcting those ills. It was that mission not just to educate men, but to cultivate good men, strong men, upright men, that brought community leaders together just two years after the end of the Civil War. They assembled a list of 37 men, free blacks and freed slaves, who would make up the first prospective class 
of what later became Morehouse College. Most of those first students had a desire to become teachers and preachers, to better themselves so they could help others do the same. A century and a half later, times have changed. But the Morehouse mystique still endures. Some of you probably came here from communities where everybody looked like you. Others may have come here in search of a community. And I suspect that some of you probably felt a little bit of culture shock the first time you came together as a class in King's Chapel. All of a sudden, you weren't the only high school sports captain. You weren't the only student council president. You were suddenly in a group of high achievers. And that meant you were expected to do something more. And that's the unique sense of purpose that this place has always infused. The conviction that this is a training ground not only for individual success, but for leadership that can change the world. Dr. King was just 15 years old when he enrolled here at Morehouse. He was an unknown, undersized, unassuming young freshman who lived at home with his parents. And I think it's fair to say he wasn't the coolest kid on campus. For the suits he wore, his classmates called him Tweed. But his education at Morehouse helped to forge the intellect, the discipline, the compassion, the soul force that would transform America. It was here that he was introduced to the writings of Gandhi and Thoreau and the theory of civil disobedience. Make the 
problem in it, now that I acknowledge it. We all going crazy, we all going crazy. We forgot where we come from, baby. We all going crazy, we all going crazy. We forgot where we come from, baby. We all going crazy, we all going crazy. We forgot where we come from, baby. We all going crazy, we all going crazy. We forgot where we come from, baby. No, that was Rassy Rose, Alien. I think I need to go get that. You can definitely find that on that pitch. Just tag in in the search. R-A-S-P-Y space R-A-W-L-S. Excuse me for the pause on that one. So uh, today I'm calling it Man Up Day, point blank period. That's all I can think about when I see my two kids graduate and I know the situations that are at hand today in the matters of our community. So I call, I'm, I'm calling it personally Man Up Day. Hopefully next year we can take this again as Man Up Day as more men see their children graduate from other grades. So when I woke up this morning, I was inspired to just write about it. So this is the first thing that came out of my mouth when I posted it on Facebook, which was the idea of a man, men, has been overshadowed by perception. The perception to be less is more, less respectable, more acceptable. In this case, we have failed not this generation, but future generations. We have become petty men. This was warned of. Ignorance of manhood should no longer be accepted. Illusions rejected. You are respectable. You are responsible for your nations. So if it breaks, fix it. If it crumbles, repair it. And if it's weak, strengthen it. And I hope black men and my brothers are listening, and if not, I hope ladies are listening, and you can share this excerpt with the brothers 